Welcome to The Girl Podcast. I'm Pastor Mike with New Hope Network. We're here to help you take your next step in your relationship with Jesus. I'm so glad you're with us today. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to The Grow Podcast. This is episode 19, Pastor Mike. Almost to 20. We are almost to 20. I'm glad this is back. For a while, you would just give us like a vague reference to whatever the numbered episode it was, and you haven't done it in a few weeks, so I'm glad that I wanted back. to throw you off because, you know, we didn't do it for a few weeks. Yeah, I'm glad it's back. We are almost to 20, though. It's, yeah. It's exciting. A lot of you uh, continue I, to give us... I didn't know we had that much to say. Uh, well, one of us has that much to say. <laughs> Uh, I just get to sit and listen uh, oh, and I sometimes, talking about you. sometimes harass you with uh, obnoxious questions, um, but that's what I'm good at. So that's what I'm here for. And all of you uh, are here for, for more great teaching from Pastor Mike. So we're, we're so glad that you're here. Um, a lot of you have given us really good feedback um, and most of it's been positive, which is great. But if you do have, you know, ideas, things we could do better, we'd yep. love to hear those too. But um, we do appreciate the the positive feedback. We appreciate how many of you are letting us know how much this podcast is helping you uh, grow throughout the week, how much it's helping you um, in your relationship with the Lord. So that's why we're doing it. So we're, we're glad to hear that. I want to encourage you to subscribe, um, whether you're on um, YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, then you'll you'll get notified every time the uh, a new episode goes out. So um, that's all the maintenance I have to take care of. All right, we can dive into the actual episode now that we're now. nine minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Subscribe. Did you say subscribe? I did say subscribe. Did you? <laughs> I guess I wasn't paying any attention. Wow. <laughs> so I'm not the only. You aren't well, the only one not paying you know attention, what? even pa- though you've got this plan. You know what, Pastor Mike? That yes. makes me feel very discouraged. Segue. Hey, uh, <laughs> yeah, last week uh, we you, we talked about how God's writing His story, and uh, we're a this part last of it. Weekend. We're yep. it. Uh, uh, yeah, this last weekend, and uh, and now uh, we're going to talk about discouragement today. So it's going to be a really fun podcast, which, which is an odd Lots connection. Of but here and here's the connection, and here's here's why I wanted to go there with this is. You know, especially this last week, and if you're if you're listening to this immediately after the week of the last week of our Book of Acts series, um, we talked about how you and I aren't just kind of here to to mark time. That just like Paul and Peter and James and John and all of these others, God's writing His story through us, and mm-hmm. it was really it, it was intended to be. A, a real challenge and encouragement for us. But here's what often happens when we are challenged, when we're encouraged to something that's bigger than us. We go, uh, not me. Yeah. Not me. And the enemy loves to mess with that too. Mm. I mean, even just, just this last week, I felt like the Holy Spirit really answered a prayer and said something cool to me and, and just affirmed some things in huge ways. And it, it wasn't 36 hours later, I just got slammed with a couple of things that were just discouraging. And why do you think that is? I don't think it was an accident. You know, the enemy knew this was meant to be encouraging. Now here's an immediate discouraging. So we all get discouraged and I think we're all dealing with it more than maybe ever before right now with COVID and stuff happening in our world. And then the Christmas season, which I love, the holiday season, which I love. That's, but a, what's, that's an understatement. Yeah. What's the the number one thing that people deal with at Christmas time and the number one season of the year that people yeah. deal with it? It's discouragement. It's depression. Uh, and so I think, I just think as we've been praying about think, thinking about this, this is just perfectly timed to help us deal with discouragement in an encouraging way. Why do you think, I want to go back to something you just mm-hmm. talked about, how things that are meant to be encouraging become discouraging encouragement becomes discouragement why do you think we're so susceptible to that um even more so during yeah like times that are meant to you know like like christmas for instance well some of that like for seasons a lot of it is expectations sure you know we set Mm -hmm. ourselves up to be discouraged so i have these expectations and a lot of times we get idealistic with our expectations don't we you know christmas is supposed to be this and we watch all of the movies yeah and all these things. This is what it's supposed to be look like. What it's supposed to look like. And so we just set ourselves up that way. I think, uh, as I said a moment ago, the enemy loves to mm-hmm. discourage us, and God has called us to be something, to, to be part of something bigger than us. And so if we say yes to it, I think there's a natural sense of this is bigger than me. I can't do this on my own. And what's that do? It's that 
it, it tempts us to fear, it tempts us to discouragement. And so I think it's a combination of any, any of those things. I don't think it's any one of those things. Uh, so thankfully, there are some biblical examples of there is. people being discouraged. Yeah. Uh, those people are, were probably uh, pretty important, prominent people. Who you well, got for us? It's, I mean, all we have to do is, is open up our Bible and start yep. wandering through. Um, you know, I, well, it starts even right at the very beginning. Okay, this is going to be a weird one. Cain and Abel. Think about this. Okay, we, <laughs> What could be discouraging <laughs> about that scenario? <laughs> you know, but why, <clears throat> why did Cain kill his brother? Because, and we can talk about Cain's sin and he didn't bring the right sacrifices and didn't honor God well, but he was discouraged. And he obviously dealt with it in a very wrong way. Mm-hmm. He killed his brother. And, and that just, it goes on from there. You know, we could talk about Noah. Can you imagine Noah building an ark when no one even heard of rain? Abraham, follow God. Where? I'll show you. You know, and then gets to the promised land. And he's never able to own a piece of land in the promised land. David, I mean, Jeremiah who's called the weeping prophet. There's a title for you. <laughs> you know, well, Jesus on yeah. the night before he went to the cross. There was so much emotional intensity there. The Bible tells us that blood actually came out of his pores. Uh, we aren't the first to deal with it in, mm-hmm. in any one shape or form. You're looking at me like you expect me to take us with where well, yeah. we're going next. All right. <laughs> here's, here's what I want to do for this time, and, and this may be even a little bit more teaching uh, here than, than, than conversation. Um, but if you have your Bible, and maybe you're where you, where you don't have your Bible, uh, you can look it up later. First Kings chapter 19, it tells us a story of a guy by the name of Elijah. I've heard of him. You've heard of him? But I, sometimes I can't remember years. if it was him or Elisha that I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Elisha was the guy who followed yeah. him. It would have been Elijah really cool mentor. if Elijah was followed by like Steve, because yeah. it would be much easier to remember which it one did be, what. And that's always one of my questions. Why? I mean, he was given that name before he ran into Elijah. So yeah. it's like, okay, I don't, I don't get that. <laughs> but Elijah's still considered today, other than Moses, but of the prophets, Elijah is considered maybe one of the greatest, if not the greatest prophet in all of the Old Testament in, in the history of Israel. And you read through his story, and God used him to do amazing things, to turn a nation that was entirely turned, had turned their backs on God, and a king that was uh, anti, wasn't just ambivalent about God, I mean anti, anti-God. And he felt like no one was on his side, which we find out later wasn't true, but he felt like that. And he got so discouraged. I mean, God used him to bring miracles, to bring drought, to bring rain, all these kinds of things. He got so discouraged. It says in 1 Corinthians 19, he asked God to take his life. So it's like, like I mean, it, yeah. it's like he knew, okay, I'm not going to take my own life. I know that's wrong. But God, I really don't want to live anymore. Yeah. So take me. And I don't know if you've ever been that discouraged. I have been. Mm-hmm. I've been there. We've talked about some, even in the past for you, mm-hmm. discouragement and things that you've dealt with. Yep. And the, what happens next, I think, is an incredible model because this isn't someone else. This isn't a story. This is God himself leading Elijah through discouragement. Mm-hmm. And, and I want to highlight that because more often than not, discouragement is something we have to deal with, not, um, not overcome. Although, and, and I may be playing with semantics yeah, how do you there. Mean, what's the difference um, you're trying to intend? I, I, I think <clears throat> over, to overcome almost sounds like we're saying it, there's a choice that I make and I'm just going to sure. gut through this. Yep. To deal with discouragement means I've got to work through what's mm-hmm. actually causing it. And more often than not, it can be it can be circumstances. But, you know, you and I have both seen, and the Bible shows people who have incredibly difficult circumstances who those circumstances didn't determine their attitude, didn't determine their outcome. Um, more often than not, discouragement is because of something that's happening in here and in here. Mm-hmm. And kind of the phrase, the, the image I use is discouragement is, is like a storm. And some storms, you, the best thing to do is just go around them to avoid them. 
And that's okay sometimes. We get around them. Sometimes it's best to go over them. It's like, I'm just going to get up, get over time. But more often than not, storms we have to go through. And I feel like for a lot of us, COVID is one of the, one yeah. of those right now. It's like, we can't get over it. We can't go around it. Even though we'd like to, we'd like to go in denial, right? And a lot of people are trying to do those. But we're, we're just going to have to go through it. And we can't change the storm. We can't stop the wind. We can't stop the lightning. And so we have to... We have to deal with it. I got to pause you for a second. Yep. Because everybody like me who's listening, who has young children, is now singing a Coco Melon song Uh about can't go over it, can't go under it, can't go around it, have to go through it. I have no idea. Is Is that a new song? Producer, are you with me on this? No. It's. I mean, I had never heard it until I think it was Coco Melon. Maybe it's Little Baby Bum. I don't know. One of these (laughs) nursery rhyme shows that my that are now ingrained in my brain for the rest of my life. But anyway, that's that, all I had. That I just, season of your life, is I, <laughs> it, it affects you for the rest of your life yeah. when you have young kids. Sometimes I get discouraged when I yeah. hear it on when <laughs> I walk into the room. I won't get into some of the songs that are still <laughs> stuck in our head around our house. Um, but let's, let's just get practical. And like I said, but this is probably more teaching than anything, but stop and, and, and help me walk through this yep. because in First Corinthians or First Corinthians, First Kings, nineteen. This is one of those First days Corinthians where is also great. Um, I've been <laughs> substituting all kinds of words. So <laughs> you your job is to correct me Perfect. if I start substituting words. All right, I can okay? do that. First Kings nineteen. Here's how God led him through it. The first thing he did, if you read uh, verses five and six, God put Elijah to sleep. And like a cat, <laughs> or. <laughs> Yeah, it's sure. a short story. Yeah. If that's he, he basically made him sleepy and yeah. helped him sleep, and we miss the fact that you know a lot of discouragement, a lot of depression. I want to clarify: I'm not talking clinical depression. Right. There's a kind of depression that we can't, and actually, all discouragement. I'm not sure we any of it we can ever get through on our own, but. We have different levels of need to get out of it. And there is a there is especially a level of clinical depression, and I've dealt with it myself, where you need someone trained yep. to get you through this. And sometimes you might need medication because here's here's what I think this is teaching. You know, God had Elijah sleep, and then when he woke him up, he fed him. And then he said, All right, now I want you to travel. And that was more about him going someplace than it was about or less about him going someplace than it was about exercise. We forget and we miss how much our phys- our physiology, our body affects our emotions, affects even our spirit. We try mm-hmm. to disconnect our spirit from our body. You know, and even there was a group of people, even in New Testament days, that were like, okay, everything about the body is evil and everything about the yep. spirit is good. They're so closely connected. That's why when we go to heaven as followers of Jesus, we'll be given new bodies. And I believe there'll be physical bodies. There'll be Mm -hmm. physical bodies free from sin, but we're closely connected. What I eat can affect how I feel. Yeah. Um, What I, whether I'm getting enough sleep. So I think the first step, and I'm kind of walking through, one of the first things if you're discouraged is to stop and say, okay, when was the last time I slept? And again, this may be where you need some help, may need some medical help. To make sure you get, to make sure you get some food, and make sure you get some sleep. Are you eating well? You know, if I just ate a two-pound bag of Jelly Bellies, like someone just got me I was this last say, didn't week, you just eat a two-pound bag. Of jelly I haven't eaten it all yet, okay. but it is sitting on my desk. <laughs> but I have to be very careful with that because, as much as I don't want to say no to those, that sugar. I can eat that sugar, and then I go, "Why am I feeling so discouraged today?" <laughs> Oh, it's because sugar just is ripping apart my body and, and yeah. it affects my emotions. So eat well, sl- get some sleep, and do whatever you can there. And are you getting some exercise? I, I've dealt with even some dis- discouragement, frustration, like I just talked about even this week and yesterday afternoon. I just realized I just need to get outside. Mm-hmm. And even though I physically wasn't feeling good, I, I went outside and I just went on a walk for about three and a half miles. Um, in the fall air, and at the end of it, it's like, okay, I'm different now. Mm. I'm different. Um, so deal with the physical start there. Uh, Richard Foster, who is this phenomenal spiritual discipline person, leads these spiritual retreats. 
of how to get close to God. And you get there, you pay all this money, and, the, and he calls you all in the room, and he said, all right, here's your first job. Go take a nap. And I've heard people and I've seen people post like, I paid all this money to come in there. He's like, you cannot get close to God if you aren't rested. What's the name of the website where I can register for one of these retreats? (laughs) Without kids. Yeah. 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 So he had him exercise. He ate. He Mm -hmm. rested. And then in verse 9, God asked him, what are you doing here? Mm. And I think this is the next key for us. Admit to yourself and to God, and maybe to someone else, that you're discouraged. Now, if you're like me, I don't like admitting that because I don't yeah. want to be whiny. Yeah, that's really hard for some people. You know, and and I get it. I mean, because we all know that person who's always overwhelmed and always discouraged, right? It's because they've never dealt with it. <clears throat> but admit to it. I mean, he he says to to God, he said, I'm done. I'm discouraged. This is too big for me. And that's a key, I think, is to admit this is too big for me. Then hmm. you notice what, go ahead. I was just going to say, sometimes I feel like we, we feel like a failure in that mm-hmm. moment though, right? Like, so, <clears throat> um, you know, we talked again this weekend about how I, I'm it, right? God's, yeah. God's picked me for, that was part of your message. Yeah. God's picked me for, you know, for, for this, this place mm-hmm. that I'm in right now. And then, and then I'm overwhelmed by it. Mm-hmm. And so then am I failing God who has picked me for this specific thing in this specific moment? And I'm not, I feel like I can't do it. So I, I think sometimes the, that guilt of failure kind of overtakes us, makes yeah. it hard to admit that. And yet I think as, as much as I don't like being in this place, I think one of the best places to be is in this place of brokenness of saying, this is too big for me. Because that's when we'll be the most ready to hear God's voice mm-hmm. and most ready to listen and most available to be dependent upon him and his power. Yeah. And yeah. And it's important to remember that God picked us for this time in this place because we're it not to accomplish it on our own, Yeah, but to work with him to accomplish and, what he's given us. And we, and I'm especially me, I have such a short view, you know, God mm-hmm. sees all of time in eternity Yeah, and he's not in a hurry. I am. Cause I'm thinking I've got you know, however many years I want to get it all done. He's going, no, you're part of the plan. Yeah. And, and that's the cool thing with what we talked about this weekend is Peter was part of the plan. Paul was part of the plan. You're part of the plan. I'm part of the plan. <coughs> yeah. It doesn't all get done. Should there be a sense of urgency? Yes. <laughs> Should there be a sense of this is bigger than me? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because that's, that's what he calls us to, which I think is what's, what, Go ahead. I was going to say that almost brings back to what you talked about earlier, where things that are meant to encourage us become discouraging. Because mm-hmm. like you said, it, it should be encouraging that I'm part of the same plan that that Peter was a part of, that Elijah yeah. was a part of, that all these incredible people we read about and we, we learn about, we study, mm-hmm. we learn from, um, that should be encouraging. But sometimes that can be used to discourage us because it does well, feel... Think of it this way. So so Satan, you know, he... He is a fallen angel and he has separated himself and con- continually separates himself away from God and all that's good. Creativity is, the, uh, is one of the essences of who God is. So as Satan has separated himself from that, his ability to be creative, is he, he doesn't have that. So what's he do? It's not like he comes mm-hmm. up with some new way to, to tempt you. What's he do? He takes something that's good and mm-hmm. God and he twists it. So God calls us to something bigger than ourselves, yeah. which is a good and godly thing. And he goes, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. You know. And we can name anything that tempts you. Ultimately, the desire for it is good in God, but he twists it yeah. or turns it into something to be afraid mm-hmm. of. So as God brought Elijah through this, he, he dealt with the physical first and deal with that. It won't be the, it's not the silver bullet, but it's the beginning. You know, get, get some sleep that you can, get some food, get, um, get some exercise. And then I think the next one is get alone with God. Mm-hmm. And there's a difference here between isolation and solitude. For me as an introvert, when I get, to, when I get discouraged, I don't want to be around people, but it turns into isolation. Sure. And I just, I just isolate myself. Solitude means I get alone with God 
with nothing else to distract me. So it's not like, okay, everybody leaves the house. I'm going to stay home all by myself. Well, I've got the TV. I've got the iPad. I've got, you know, <laughs> like I'm not alone with God here. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm by myself. Um, and you notice part of what um, God did with Elijah, he had him travel to a place and he went into a cave. He removed all of the distractions from around him. Was that because Elijah's cell phone signal didn't yes, get that's into the it. cave? Yes, He yeah. couldn't get any cell phone signal. <laughs> And I think the best solitude is, is people say, how long do you need? You need longer than what you're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. I, well, I don't, I tend to. What if I'm for, only comfortable for <laughs> 10 yeah, to 12 for, seconds? For an extrovert like you, it's like, okay, 30 <laughs> seconds, I'm good. You know? and, and for some people, that, that may be a few minutes a day. Do you think, and maybe I'm weird, I'm much more comfortable with isolation than I am with solitude. I would say that's true with most of us. Okay, because that, you know, that scenario you presented, mm-hmm. an empty house with my TV or yeah. my PlayStation or a book. This or, is heaven. Yeah, that no, sounds No, that's not lovely. heaven. That's distraction. Yeah. yeah. And that's what most of us want when we're discouraged. <clears throat> yeah. And that's why most of us don't deal with it. We try to do yep. what? We try to avoid it. Yep. Avoid the storm by doing what? Distracting ourselves from mm-hmm. it. Um, we think that TV will will give us rest. It doesn't give us rest. There's a difference between rest and replenishment. And in discouragement, you need to be replenished. Rest is part of it. Nothing wrong with watching TV. So you're saying like a 20th time through the office isn't going to finally give me rest? It probably won't. (laughs) And it's longer than you're comfortable with. And and here's, you notice what happened. It it goes through this story. If, if, you've, if you read or if you're reading the story, he's waiting for God to show up. And it says this wind comes, and then an earthquake comes, and then fire comes. And in each one of them says, we would say, huge wind, that's got to be God because God's powerful. A huge earthquake. But each one of those, it says, but God wasn't in that. And I think with each one of those, it's, and, and we could really go deep on this, I think there's some, some symbolism there mm-hmm. of paying attention to what, tends to distract us. The wind is kind of like, you know, when it's real, real windy, it's like, what do I need to batten down? You know, it's dealing with the urgent. The urgent isn't where God speaks. The earthquake, how many times have we had stuff in our life where the foundation of our life just shakes? And we go, God, we need you. And that's certainly where we come to God. But we want to pay attention to the foundation shaking instead of mm-hmm. our relationship. And even the fire, what's a fire do? A fire ultimately does what? It consumes, it drains, it devours. Mm-hmm. And we want to say, God, will you remove all the stuff that's draining and devouring? It wasn't until he'd removed all of those things, and I think God kind of pushed that there to teach him and to teach us, it was in the quiet whisper. When finally I'm able to be quiet enough to ask. And God just addresses him um, in very quiet ways. And, and there's three questions that he, he doesn't say them these way, this way, but he answers for Elijah. And there are three questions that once you get quiet enough, I think we can begin to ask God, one, what do I need to know? Because that's always the first way we grow. What do I need to know? But if we stop there, we become just full of information and Mm -hmm. there's no transformation. Because I know that, who do I need to be? And so we notice with with Elijah, he says, you need to know you aren't alone. You need to know you aren't alone. Second, who I need you to be, I need you to continue to be my chosen one. You know, and, and so he just describes that to him. He says, and then he says, and here's what I need you to do next. And, and that's such a key one because what happens for most of us when we get discouraged? I, I need to conserve my energy, so I'm going to stop doing stuff. That happened in COVID, didn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we were told we couldn't do stuff. Right. And now we're all tired, and so I can't, you know, I used to volunteer in my kid's classroom. I can't do that anymore. I used to volunteer for that. No, I, I just can't. I just don't have the energy for it anymore. And yet, doing something, not for the sake of doing something or earning God's attention, but doing something to act out what we know and who we're to be is exactly what our heart needs. When, I'm, when I turn inward, the thing my, my heart needs more than anything else is something that forces me to look outward. Mm-hmm. And God gives him a list of things. I want you to go talk to this person. I want you to go anoint this person. I want you to go mentor this person. 
and just gives that to him along the way. Almost forced him into community. He did. Yeah. Here's what I want you to do. When he was started out feeling alone. And yeah. Then, yeah. And and even he fights it. I and mean, we ring down a little bit further. He says, I want you to go I want you to go anoint Elisha to be your replacement. So he goes, he finds Elisha, and Elisha comes chasing after him and says, I need to go doing this. And Elijah's like, Go back, I don't care. <laughs> You know, Elijah was such a uh, such a snot sometimes with this stuff, um, and I, and for me, as I'm listening for that, I always ground that in scripture. So, I mean, there's been some key passages for me. Psalm 23 is one I'm working through right now. Um, when I feel like this, I'm discouraged, I just start quoting it. It's going, okay, this is who I'm supposed to. This is what I'm supposed to know. I'm supposed to know you're my shepherd. Who am I supposed to be? Not a person who is in need because you make me lie down in green pastures. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to even sit with people who others might consider to be my enemies. I'm Mm -hmm. supposed to reach out, you know? And so I just live in those moments and look for those scriptures and think through those scriptures. It's Thanksgiving approaches because that's the gateway to, for me, Christmas. I know for you. My favorite holiday, but... (laughs) Don't it's appreciate it being called a gateway, but that's fine. It's a great holiday. Um, a great scriptures, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. It talks about don't, being, don't be anxious about anything, but bring everything to God with what? With thanksgiving. And so there's a practice. What do I need to know? Don't be worried. How can I be worried? How can I not be worried? Here's what I need to do. I need to bring everything to God with thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Then he will guard my hearts and minds. So some of that is just sitting alone long enough to let him speak to you. But most of us don't sit alone long enough to let him speak to us. The wind or the earthquake or the fire come and, beca- and we get distracted by those and we say, oh, that's God. Yeah. And we aren't listening. It's hmm. good. Thank you, Pastor Mike. Hopefully that's helpful. Do you have, a, do you have homework for us? I do have some homework okay. for us. Um, I here, here's here's the homework. Um, sometime before the end of the year. So this is an extended homework. So okay. and because this will you take get more some than planning. a week for this homework. Yeah. So this will take some planning. Pull out your calendar and choose either half a day or a full day to get alone with God. Whether you're discouraged or not, I want to encourage you to do that. Some of some of you will love it. Some of you it will be a struggle. But get alone. Remove the distractions. Um, tell tell friends and family. Remember, my phone will be off from this time to this time. Oh, that, you just, Here, you yeah. just lost a lot of people with that one. Here, here's where I will be in case there's an emergency. And define for them what an emergency is. <laughs> okay, emergency isn't that, you know. Um, I don't want to make my own sandwich. I don't want to make my own sandwich <laughs> or something like that. Sometimes that's an Half emergency. a day. Maybe it's an hour. But some increment and decide ahead of time. And just give that time to maybe part of it is taking a nap. Part of it is just listening and asking, Lord, as I move into this new year, what do I need to know? Who do I need to be? What do I need to do? Hmm. And and I think that will encourage you as we look forward to another year. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we all could use some encouragement uh, at different times in our lives. So, all right. Well, thank you, Pastor Mike. And again, I think we, I think it was last week that we kind of stressed this more intentionally, but you know, as, as our series wrapped up this last weekend, stop going to church, almost want to do a stop listening to the podcast series of yeah. like, it's, we love that you're here, but make sure that the, the lessons that we're getting from pastor Mike and the, the homework that you're giving mm-hmm. us, those are things that we're acting on because you know, even you even said it today, it's not just information we're filling our heads with, right. but it's, it's life change. It's things that we're doing to improve ourselves, to improve our relationship with God. So um, let's make sure we're intentional about this homework. And we got way more time this time. We get all the way till January. That's right. You homework. get a lot of so time for homework. If you're like me and you love to procrastinate in school, just push it off till like yeah. December 28th and then, then get it, it on in. your calendar. Yes. Yeah. Don't, Get it on Don't your procrastinate. Yeah. It's not a good idea. But well, thank thank you again for uh, for joining us today. Thank you again, Pastor Mike. <coughs> Excuse me for your for your teaching. Uh, I know 
I and uh, everybody joining us always appreciate it. Again, I want to give you a quick reminder to, to subscribe if you haven't yet. That way you'll get notified automatically of our next podcast, um, and uh, which they go up on Mondays. So thank you again for being here. Remember, growth always starts with a next step. So let's make sure that we're being intentional about taking those next steps as we look to grow a relationship with God. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.